All right, I think we're live. Let's see. Are we live? Here we go. Nice. So let me quickly tweet about this. Uh, uh, let's find a uh, oops, that's not it. I think we're live. Oh, I see some viewers. Yeah, nice. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for joining me today. Uh, there we go. Nice. Hey, hey, folks! Thank you for thank you for joining this very improvised stream. Uh, this is my first time. I don't know if you saw on Twitter when I announced this. Um, so first time streaming on Twitch, if you don't count my my streams eight or 10 years ago, streaming Destiny from my PS4. So first time using, actually talking about code and streaming from my computer. Um, I'm using Stream Studio, or sorry, not Stream Studio, but Twitch Studio, which is the like the default app to stream on Twitch. Um, but I haven't changed any of the settings. So if the audio is choppy or the video doesn't look right, let me know uh, because uh, I don't know if I'd be able to fix it, but I'll, I can try. Um, awesome. This demo is awesome. Uh, are you talking about the demo that we might be able to build today, which uh, is, uh, where is it? Here. Uh, audio is fine, not dropping any frames. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Matias. I'm very glad to hear that. Um, all right. So yeah, this is what we're going to try to build today on the stream using Astro and view transitions. We are not going to build the entire thing because I will be, that will take too much time. I don't think we, I, I don't even think I can build the entire thing, but we're going to try to focus on the couple of transitions that we have here. So let's uh, actually jump in. Maybe we should talk about Astro first. Just talk about Astro and show you. If you follow me on Twitter, oh, I'm sorry, on, tw on Twitter or X, you'll see some of the some of my demos and you know how excited um, I am about Astro. So let me jump to the view transitions documentation. This is what we're going to be using today, which is a built-in support for, for B transitions in Astro. Uh, I built a couple of, uh, or a few different demos over the years using Astro and V transitions, uh, but only one of them is using the built-in support, which is just launched on Astro 3 this week. Um, so I'm still quite new to the, to the Astro API. Uh, I know how to use the directives, but I never actually used some of the advanced features that they have, for example, for uh, customizing the animations using the API or what else? Um, I know they have some hooks, this uh, page load events or after sub. I never actually used this. I don't know if we're gonna have to use this today for this demo, but uh, I'll just give the documentation around just in case. So going back to this, uh, let's see if I can put this full screen. There we go. So there are a couple of things that we can that are interesting here. Uh, one is there's a transition between these two pages, right? So there's the, here we are on the barbecue page, and then if I move to uh, design, you see how you know the content fades out, and then the the next page fades in in a kind of like a sort of like a staggered fashion, like not all the cards. Uh, slide up at the same time. I think this is this could be interesting to build. 
more more interested in the other transition, which is when you open one of these cards. Um, when you open, when you click, click on one of the cards, it opens in this model. But it, this uses this sort of morph transition when the card that was here now kind of translates to the next stage, right? So it, it opens up here. Uh, the text moves as well and grows inside. So the text that says current current hope here, it also like, um, yeah, it increases in size and then some of the other text that was around, it disappears. And then this part appears and I think the white box around it, yeah, it grows during the transition. So this is gonna be interesting because there are a few things happening here. One is, uh, oh, hi, thanks for the follow. I didn't realize we have this alerts enabled. This is pretty cool. Um, so there are a couple of things here. One is the image morphing into this new position. And the other is the sort of like the, this white box around it, which is like the body of the model also like growing during the transition, which is kind of fun. And also like you see how this, this card at the bottom here, it also, it moves to fill the space, right? It moves here to fill the space, which is pretty cool. Um, so yeah, there are a lot of things. I don't think we can, we can make all of this in one or two hours, but we're gonna try, we'll see how far we get. So let's start uh, by building some layout first. Uh, where should we start? We should probably start by grabbing something Let's see if we can find a Tailwind template or component that looks kind of like this, like this layout, so we don't have to build everything from scratch. Um, so I'd like to go to this site called Flowbyte. If you use Tailwind, I don't know if I have any any resources. Hey, hey folks, thank you for the follow. Thank you for joining. Sorry, there is no music in the stream. I know you're used to some more uh, polished productions on Twitch. Uh, but uh, maybe maybe for next time. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I was looking for like layouts. Let's see. I like this, um, maybe this layout. Uh, yeah, that's not it. Let me actually f search for Tailwind layouts. And is there a, I'm gonna add flow, flow byte. Blocks. Oh, this is master regard. This is perfect. Let's go here. So this is so this got it right here. This is, looks almost exactly like the demo that we we're gonna try to build today with this Pinterest style grid. So we're gonna copy this exactly as it is. And then for the layout, I want I want to find like a full page layout. There should be some um how do they call it structure? Skeleton. Oh. I'm on blocks, yeah. Sign navigations. Here, application shells. This is what I'm looking for. So I'm going to copy one of this. This one. Yeah, I think this is. This one is paid. So this one is free. So I'm going to just copy this one. Uh, Oh, but actually, we should probably start up, uh, create a new project, right? We don't have anything. So let's start by uh, creating a new Astro project. So I'm going to move to my experiments folder. And uh, let's create a new Astro project with npm create Astro latest. And we have, let me zoom this a little bit. We have Houston here. What should we name our project? Um, let's do Astro View Transitions. Uh, and what should be, what are this? We wanna create something that is kind of like, because I, I've made some of my, my older demos. Uh, if you see some of my demos, you'll see that they all follow like a, like a theme, right? We have the Astro Movies, which is all, you know, movies also like uses view transitions then we have astro records i think it is which is uh the music player you may have seen which this is the one that uses the view transitions built-in support in astro 
and uh, it has some other like interactive things like it plays uh, it has this this persistent component which is a, a an actual interactive component you see this is playing music here and if I go back you see that that state is persistent so I keep my I keep my state here at the bottom I don't have to build this from scratch um and this is obviously like music records so this one seems to be like podcasts or blog posts of some sort because I've seen some podcasts uh, so we can build something that is all podcasts let's see let's call let's call it astro, astro podcasts for now pod podcasts is that right I think so okay sample files all right Yes, this is um, this is one of my favorite things about Astro. The CLI is just amazing, and also we're gonna install Tailwind now, and it's gonna take uh, it's gonna take only a few minutes or maybe even a few seconds. Uh, that music demo is yours. Yes, I, I uh, this is the demo that um, I put together. This demo actually, I think it was last year. Um, I was with uh, with Jason Langsdorf on on Learn with Jason stream. And we build this using Turbolinks, actually. So if you go to Learn with Jason, you'll find uh, this is the latest episode that I was with uh, with Jason, which was on July of this year. But the previous one was, let's see if I go, there you go, September of last year. So almost exactly a year ago. And in this demo, we build, we, uh, sorry, in this stream, we build that demo. The, the music player, but we used Turbolinks at the time because Astro didn't have uh, like a client side router support yet, so um, so we had to build our own with Turbolinks. Uh, but then when Astro released the support for view transition, I kind of I removed Turbolinks completely and um, I just started using the the built-in directives and the built-in uh, components for view transitions, and it worked exactly the same and with a lot less uh, client-side JavaScript. So pretty cool demo. You can see the source code. Uh, I don't have a link to the source code here, but you can find it on my on my GitHub. Uh, where were we? I got lost, sorry. Oh, we were creating an Astro project. Uh, we're gonna try to write TypeScript. We're gonna say strict, yes. And um, yes, we wanna create a new repo. View API still in beta or is it safe to use? It is safe to use. Uh, yeah, so the View Transitions API, uh, it only works in Chrome-based browsers right now. So it only works on Chrome and Arc, which is what I'm using now, and on Edge as well. But it doesn't work on Firefox or Safari yet. I believe there is an intent to implement from, from the different browser vendors, so it's coming pretty soon to other browsers, I, I will assume. Uh, but I think it's safe to, to to implement right now. Oh, hey. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I'm glad you're excited. Uh, let me let me show you what I was doing. Um, okay, let's jump to my the project I just created, which is Astro Podcasts, right? Sorry, I got lost for a second. And let's open the VBS code. Let's close this. All right. Um, let me know if the size, the font size is okay because I I don't know exactly if this is too small or not. Maybe I'll just bump it up a little bit. Oops, maybe that's too much. Yeah, hope that's okay. We're gonna have to shrink this as well. So maybe like this. That's fine, perfect. Uh, okay, so let's give this around. Let's, I think we can close this. And, and let's start this up. Run dev. That's not, oh, um, need to use npm 18. I still have 16 installed on my computer. Uh, let's close this. Okay. Nice, we have a fresh new Astro project. 
and let's uh the first thing we want to do is want to install tailwind so let's go to uh, oh this is a, yeah i was i was saying this is my favorite thing about about astro that you can do mp mpx uh astro add tailwind uh, and it does everything for you i remember how hard it used to be to install tailwind on a project it probably still is if you don't use astro uh, but yeah remember having to set up all these config files and creating CSS files. And that's it. You just answer yes a couple of times and you're done. Uh, so now we have Ast uh, Tailwind installed. We can copy our layout. Yeah, C the CLI is the best. Where was our layout? We were looking at the layout in Flowbytes. There we go. So yes, we're going to copy all of this. And we're going to go back to Oh, code editor. And I'm actually going to just replace the entire index page with all well, the entire content of the page with that. Let me remove the styles as well. I'm going gonna, gonna to need that. And yeah, that's it. So let's, let's see how this looks. There we go. I have a new layout. This I love Tailwind because you can just copy and paste code and it looks exactly as you would expect. I didn't have to change anything. This is amazing. So I know this doesn't look exactly like the this, but it's kind of the same. You know, have the same. I have a sidebar and a header, so I'm not gonna spend too much time working on like the getting the UI just right. Just gonna focus on the the content. Um. Okay. For the um, we also found, let's see if I can find it, this gallery, which I'm also going to copy and paste in the body. So let me find the body. So I have the nav. This is Cyvar. And here's the body. So I'm going to replace all of this. with my, I should probably put this in a component. So let me create a, let me gonna create a new component. Just gonna call this gallery.astro. I'm gonna paste that here. And then I'll jump back to my index and I'm gonna say gallery. There we go. So we should have, yes, nice. So, I think we're just gonna keep it like this. I know it doesn't look just like this. Maybe I remove one column so it looks more like, yeah, I think that's fine. Yeah, we're just gonna leave it like this. We can we can work on the UI if we have time later. But um, yeah, like I mentioned, I wanted to focus on this transition, right? The transition from here to here. So let me actually grab a couple of screenshots of this this state so we have something easier to work with um, and let's, let's go here yeah and let me grab a screenshot, uh, screenshot of the after state which is this maybe an in between as well yeah let me grab the after first so I'll just grab a screenshot. Okay. So let's see which components we need to have uh, animating on the screen. So I'm create a couple of boxes here. So we have the um, obviously the the image itself which is, I don't know if it's going to be a background image or an actual image. Well, we will, we'll figure it out. We have the image which exists here as well. Oops, it's not it. And then I think for the container, we're going to have to have another box around it because if we want it to grow, if we want the container to grow like like this during the transition, like in this middle state that is growing, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to make 
make it part of the initial state as well, right? So we we're gonna have to have some wrapper around this. Like this is gonna be the wrapper, which is gonna be invisible here. And then, oops, oh, damn it. And then that's gonna be like the wrapper for the entire, entire model in this case. And then we have the text. Uh, I guess the text also needs some sort of transition name because we also want this to to animate. And then, uh, oh, I used the wrong color here. Oh, that's fine. I mean, it's blue. There you go. And then these two elements will disappear. They don't exist, like the podcast uh, label and this button. They don't exist on the next one. So we're just gonna. I think this is just gonna remove them, right? And we can do like an exit transition because if the elements don't exist on the next view, they we can fit, we can determine like an exit transition. They can fade out in a way. Uh, I wonder what language is written in. Are you talking about this demo in particular? I think this demo is just like a visual demo, like a like a concept design. So. They probably use something like uh, maybe like a an After Effects. Oh, Astro CLI. Um, maybe Rust. I think it's Rust. I'm not sure. There's someone from Astro on the stream. They can confirm. But uh, as I understood, I think it was Rust at one point. Uh, maybe it's in JavaScript because I know that um, there is also a package that lets you do this this uh, sort of like form prompts in a CLI. Maybe that's what they use for for the CLI, the part that you see that you interact with, but the core is is, is uh, powered by Astro. But I'm just making things up. I, I don't actually know. Um, okay, let's go back to the code and figure out how we can do this. So we're gonna need to, okay. So one thing is that this is like a model, right? This is a, we could be this entirely on the same page. So this is the you know this is the page and this is the model that is open, and we can do that with we can do that with view transitions as well, but we're not going to be using any of the Astro features because the Astro features help you when you want to transition from one page to the next. So since we're gonna kind of demo those, what we're going to do is going to build this as two separate pages. So it's going to be like the index page, and this, which looks exactly the same, has the same content behind it, but also has this model is going to be the sort of the details page, right? So we're going to build these two pages and it's going to look like they are on the same page, but uh, they're actually not. There's are the two independent pages, which is nice because you can share the URL to, to the details page and it will look like this. You don't have to open the model. Um, okay. So let's actually move this. Oops. Here we go. Let me open this in full screen. I'm gonna create a couple of components for the nav and uh, and the sidebar. We're probably not gonna touch this, so I'm just gonna move them. Let's put the entire sidebar here and the entire nav like here. I'm just gonna import those components. Nav. Oh, why is it not working? Okay, I'm gonna import it manually. So we have nav and cyber. Okay. So we can start. Let's create this second page first. Let's create the details. I'm gonna say details that ask. Astro details, Astro, and on this is gonna be a copy of this other page. But details will also have this model, this overlay on top of the other. So um, let's do let's do a model component and let's create model dot Astro. And here, uh, I'm not very good with Tailwind actually, but I think we can do like class fixed. Uh, let's see, fixed h full w full. 
and VG is VG purple just to confirm and let me bring that, that model here oh come on so if I did things right we should see the index is this but if I go to to detail, which you see just uh, a purple screen. Oh, it's details. Okay, no purple screen. And that's because, oh, there's a purple screen, but that's not what I wanted to do. Uh, fixed should be absolute. Oh, maybe it's Z-index, Z-index. Not really. Do any relative on the, on the entire thing, maybe? Uh, top zero. Oh, okay. Yes, you're right. So top zero. Bottom zero. Okay, that's what I need to do. Uh, and I should remove the relative here. There we go. Yes. Thank you. That's what I'm missing. I'm probably going to be using like a mix of uh, uh, Tailwind and and just raw CSS because I'm not familiar with all the things in Tailwind. Uh, it's all zero, one, and zero. And okay, what I'm missing now? <laughs> Jesus. The Z index. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Z fix Z index uh, twenty. No. God damn it. Oh, it needs to be absolute. What am I doing wrong? Jesus. Oh, there's something with a very high Z index here. Oh, Z fifty. Yeah, that's not what I want. So let me go to the, um, well, I can just put a very, can I do Z100? <laughs> I just do Z10 and I remove the Z50 from the, I guess it's the sidebar as uh, Z40, so go away. And uh, the nav. There we go. All right. Z50 says, okay, yeah, okay. That's good because we want this to be, I'm guessing the model will be inside of this. Uh, so this is just the overlay, right? So if we go to the model components, we actually want this to be, I think it was, is this how you set opacity? Yeah, like 40%. So it's going to be like sync 800. Oh, the header should be higher than the cyber. So let me put a Z 10 here. There we go. But yeah, so this is the overlay and then no overlay here. Maybe it should be darker. So like. 70. Yeah, that's, that's clear. And, um, and here we're going to have the action model, which, which is going to make it, uh, actually we're going to copy the model from the, from flow byte <laughs> or a card. I think one is a car component. It's probably a car with an image at top this. Let's see if that's another one. Oh, this is a nice list for the, um, the details of the model, which we might use. Yeah. I was going to copy that card, uh, here, just copy it. 
and just put that in here. See how it looks. Okay, nice. So I guess in if we do like if we see say flex here and align or oh, item center justify center that should bring this to the middle, which is where we want it. And I don't have an image. So let's use one of the images that I have on the gallery. Let's do this one. There we go. And yeah, we can worry about this, the contents later. Actually, let me remove all of that. I think this is the contents. It's gonna go rid of all of this. And I'm just gonna say like, oops, please hold it. And I want to make this white so that it matches the the other thing. So let me remove the dark classes. There you go. I should remove the border as well. Okay, so I think this matches more or less the the UI. We're missing the text. I should probably do this. Let me see if I can grow this. LG. Yeah, I kind of like it. I would love to build. Um. Oh, what we can do is we can make this go back to the home page. So if I click here, it should take me back here, and then I can click on this card. So let's go to gallery and let's wrap this image. Let's go to details. And if I click here, it should take me back. It should take me to the, to the model page, which is a full page navigation. This is not really a model. This is a completely different page and we're not have, we don't have any transitions. So we, I, I guess at this point we can start implementing some transitions. So let's do that. Let's see how this looks with some minimal transitions. So we can do that by going to our layout and here we can just at the top, uh, sorry, on the head, we can import this view transition component from Astro Transitions. And just by doing that, this will already like have an animation. Right. I don't know if you can see, but this is fading in and fading out. One cool way to debug these transitions to make it easier or clear to see is you can use the animations tab in Chrome. If you don't see it, you have to open the console hitting escape. And then here you'll find animations here in this, in this menu. And here what you can do is you can pop, we can actually slow it down to like 10%. So this is very clear what's happening. We can see the fade in and fade out happening very, uh, very slowly. Uh, but what I love to do is you can actually pause the animation and then click on it and it will look like it's broken, like nothing is broken anymore. That's because the transition is happening at this time. So you can actually slide this and control the, the progress of the transition. So you can see exactly if you want to fine tune the, the, the animations, uh, this is the best way to do it. This is also a great way to inspect the pseudo elements that are, are added to the DOM when you uh, when a transition is happening because if you don't do this if you just try to slow it down let's say to ten percent um, and I might need to refresh the screen there we go you see that it adds the pseudo elements while the transition is happening but then they go away so I don't really have time to inspect this if I want to but if I pause the transition and then I click here. Now this is all paused, so I have all the time that I that I need to actually go in and inspect what's happening here. You can see the the transition group, the transition image pair, and we can see the old and the new transitions, right? This is super useful for when you have this is just the root element. So this is the entire page transitioning in and out. But when you have uh like the, let's say the image, we want to transition just the image, this is very useful for debugging um for debugging how the transition looks before and after. So that's what we're gonna do next. Let's uh, let's actually refresh here. 
and let's add uh uh would you upload this live to youtube i will try i i hope this is being recorded i'm not sure how this works exactly so i apologize for that but uh if i get the recording i will definitely upload it to youtube uh yes you can also search for any panel with command shift p oh on the debug tool yes command shift p and you can search for animations here that's a great, a great tip animations show animations and it will show you this exactly yes um okay so let's go back to what we wanted to do which is we want to morph this image into its position in the next page right and this is very easy to do with with astro uh with actually with the view transitions api but astro gives you a directive to do it even even more easily so uh if we go to the gallery in this case you're going to point to my particular image that I want to transition. I don't have, I don't, I don't have links to all the images, but, um, and here we can use the transition, transition name directive. We can give the name. It has to be unique. So it, it can't be only one element on the page can have this ID, right? So it's like an ID, but it, the page will actually break if you have multiple, multiple elements on the page with the same, uh, transition ID or transition name. So I'm going to call this cover image. And then on the details page, oh, that's interesting. We're going to see and actually how this is going to break now because the gallery component, uh, sorry. Yeah. The gallery component is present in both pages, right? Both here and here, because it's like right, right under this, right? This, this one here. Um, so if I do add the transition name to my model component, to the image of my model component, we will see how we're going to get an error. We see, we see no transition and we, we probably got an error here. Duplicate the transition name, because here I have actually the image is here and it's also here. Like I have in this page, I have two, two images with the same transition name. So what we can do is, um, when I render the gallery on my details page, I can pass a um, I can pass a prop here. Ideally, if we were building this from re for reals, like if we were be building a real application, each one of these will have an ID, and we will pass the ID of the image that we want to not include in the gallery. You know, so in this case, this let's say this is image number eight. So when I when I'm on this page. I will pass the prop uh, gallery or uh, current image or current image ID eight, and it will look for the ID eight, and it will not render it. Right? That's what we want to achieve. But in this case, I'm just gonna be, be a bit lazy, and I'm gonna say uh, without without image or something like that. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put a flag in here and go to the gallery. I'm gonna grab that prop. without image from astro.props and I can, I can also like define the interface. I love how easy it is to define like props in, in astro when you use TypeScript, uh, or prop types. So you can just say without image and say that this is, uh, an optional Boolean. And now what I can do is I can conditionally render this, this one. Um, so if not without image, maybe we should just call this with image, but you know what I mean? Uh, there we go. So if I'm on the details page, did I do this wrong? Oh, I need to save this. There we go. So on the details page, we see have the, we have this empty space now here, and now we should no longer see the error. Oh, we still see the error. Hold on. What am I doing wrong? Details page without image. Uh, and if without image is false, it shouldn't render this. Wait, I have the transition name in a <laughs> in the wrong place. There we go. It's not here. There we go. Okay. So now it works, right? Now the transition works and now we get the morphine effect, which is why we want it. 
it's still a bit clunky. You you see, uh, we can actually debug this. Let's uh, let's do what I like to do, which is I'm just gonna click on this, and you can see that the the rest of the page, what is not the image, it starts to fade in at the same time. So that's why it, it causes this sort of like a weird shadow effect while the transition is happening. So what we can do is we can have that grow with the content as well. With the, when, when the model shows how we can have that grow. So let's see how we can accomplish that. Because for now, I just have the image. And if we go back to the, the sketch that we were drawing, what we did is we put the transition name on the this red box, which is just the image for now. But we also need to do it for the container of the image, right? So that it grows with the model as it's showing. So let's see how we can do that. So let's see, uh, maybe it can be the link itself. Hmm. I'll just add another div just in case. I don't want to. I don't want to mess things up with the grid. I'm not exactly sure what how this grid works, so I'm just going to add another div that, let's say, my div is going to have, so this is on the gallery page, and it's going to have like a background, a white background, but it shouldn't show. Oh, it's showing up here, so I guess it needs the same the same border radius. So it's like it's there, but we don't see it because the image is taking 100% of the of the container, right? So if we go to now the model, we also want to add this div around it, which actually we have that. This is our div around it, right? This is the, the div with the white background. So if technically, if we add the transition name here, we say that this is the like the wrapper, right? Gonna add the transition name here and the same transition name here. Let's see how this looks. Okay, I think that's better. Let's see. Let's pause and open. Yeah, okay, it's definitely better because it's not, uh, we don't have the shadow that we had before, but we can see that the content is still fading in. The like th this part is fading in instead of growing like we wanted, like we wanted on the original tweet. If we go to the de demo here, so this is the in between state, right? We want this to not fade in, we want it to grow in size. And uh, I think one way we can do that is, yeah, I think we can make this happen. But I, there's a technique for when handling differences in aspect ratio, when you have different, the yeah, the, the element that they're transitioning from and transitioning to have different aspect ratios. Uh, there's a there's a technique for to handle that. If we go to the view transitions uh, here, the the blog post on, on Chrome developers and search for aspect ratio discovers exactly how to do that. So, and there's a demo here, right? If, uh, see if I can find it before and after. But this demo shows you how, let me open the inspector as well. You see that we have uh, the, the card here has an image that is a square, but when I open the details is you know, it's a, like a wide image. It has an aspect ratio of like two, two, one. And here's like a one, one. So the, that technique allows you to do that. You can have an image like grow to fill its container without showing both the before and after image, which will look bad because it, that one will show you uh, one fading in and the other fading out. Let's see if I can remove those rules to, to show you how that will look like. Um, Oh, I'm still paused. Hold on. There we go. Oh, it's actually going to be hard because those rules are applied to the transition 
to the transition pseudo elements. So I can't inspect them at this point, only when I pause. So it's fine. Banner image. Yeah. I'm going to remove all these rules that I have here. Animation none, like all of this. And also here. And now if we look at the, if we inspect the animation, you see how, well, first of all, this is no, no longer, maybe I remove something else. But yeah, I think it's easier to show you on the demo that we're working on with. So sorry for the segue, but I just, I'm just going to copy all of this because this is what we want. And let's bring this to, let's put this on a global style sheet. Oh, so we have these styles here. Can actually remove all of this. And we want this, but not for, we want to put a transition name of our model container, which I think we call wrapper. It's going to do this here. Oops. Uh, let's first test how that looks. There's a demo. And I think, oh, I removed some styles. Well, I'll bring those back. But I think this is working as we expected. You see, let's pause this. And see how the content is kind of growing from, from underneath the car instead of fading in or fading out. Maybe we can do is we can put a min width to make it uh, more noticeable. So let's go to the model and let's do uh, min width of full. Is that too much? I don't know. Let's see. Well, that didn't even work. How do I set? Actually, let's just do. Uh... Oh, no, not width. I'm looking at height. Height of. Oh, mean height. Come on, I can't type, sorry. Mean height, uh, full. No, this is not gonna work. Let's just do style height, 300 pixels. There we go. And now it's more noticeable, like, uh, let's gonna slow it down. You'll see how it slowly grows to fill the 100% the space, right? You can do custom. Oh, nice. Okay, I'm gonna copy that. Thank you. Thank you for all the Tailwind tips. I definitely need them. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, let's, bring, let's bring this back to I removed the background color for some reason. But if I go to my gallery, which is the one that has the background? Ah, oh, here. So let's put this on the body as well. So let's go to layout. There we go. I fixed the background. So yeah, that's what we have. I think it looks pretty cool so another thing i don't notice um you might notice another difference between this and the demo is that you see how the, the text is kind of sliding in which is not doesn't look particularly good um and here in the demo we had what we have is that we have the contents showing up after so once the model when the, once the transition finishes then the content slide in, which uh, prevents this this weird thing that we have with the with the content sliding in mid transition, right? So what we need to do is you see how it's like semi transparent as well. Here you can see the placeholder content underneath the image. Yeah, that's not what we want. What we can do is. Um, yeah, just that, do just that. Just render the empty content first and then have this animate 
afterwards. Which I guess we can do if I if we set like a animation, like a regular CSS animation on the content and apply um, a transition delay of whatever is the length of the transition, which is 250 milliseconds, then that will prevent this from happening, I believe. So we can try that. And the other thing that we don't have here in our demo that I wanted to try is, you see how underneath the model, we have the two cars, when this shift in place, these two cars, like they fit in and fade out. So we can probably fix this as well by adding a transition name here, which is gonna cause some issues, I believe, but we're gonna try to see how those, how we resolve those. Um, okay, so let's start with the, let's start with that actually, let me, and I think I'm gonna move, I'm gonna change images. I'm gonna use this one so we can, you can do the animation of, that we have here for when this car goes goes up to the model and this one underneath it, like it's, it, it moves up to fill the space. I wanna try to see how we can mimic that animation as well. So instead of using the, instead of using this car, I'm gonna use this one to the, for the, the transition. So let me move that from my gallery. I'm gonna put the, oh, I guess I can just switch places between these two, right? Just gonna, Move this up. Yeah, that works. You still see that this is fading in and fading out and I have some weird white space here for some reason. I don't know. Uh, I think that's just a grid. Let me actually see if we can fix that first. If I remove this, I would expect this to go all the way to the top. So maybe this column has, this is a column. Um, I think it won't be possible because the demo uses a muscle degree that can be used in CSS. Um, it won't be possible because the demo uses a muscle degree that can be used in CSS. So are you talking about this demo or this other demo, this one? Because here, so that is a picture as a picture of a ball. <laughs> the the overexpose the overexposure in the in the between transitions, yeah, that happens. I, and we can disable that I think with um, some of the the techniques covered in this blog post. This is one of them. I think we got like changing the mix blend mode and those sort of things. We can we can prevent that, that exposure. But the problem here that we're trying to solve is that the we can see instead of the image, instead of uh, moving up, like morphing all the way or trans translating to the top, it's fading out and then the image in the new position is fading in. But what we want is this this shift, right? We want it to shift to the top. Uh, experimental grid temperature roll mass on rate. Yeah, I don't think we're using this here, but I believe there is a way to, when you have a grid, am I missing one element? I can move, I can actually say that this, I want to move this to the top, right? I'm pretty sure. So CSS grid, grid column, we're gonna spend too much time on this because this is not what I wanna cover, but um, align top, I don't know. Uh, align item start. Will this work? No. I think there is a way. <clears throat> Have you looked into naming your regions? Transition name. What do you mean by region exactly? I think I did this. Let me let me let me pull uh, an old project. Um, actually, have this test transitions. Hold on. Yeah, this is not it. 
Well, I was going to leave it like this, I guess. Great temp, great outer rows, great temple comp. Okay. I'm going to try some of those, like grid, template, columns, auto. Yeah, it's not it. Rows, auto. Oh, there we go. Max content. This is what I want. I don't know exactly what this is doing, but it's doing the thing that we want, which is that when we're missing a place in the grid, this is shifting up instead of leaving that weird gap in the middle. So we're just going to copy this and we're going to add it to at least to this column. <laughs> well, glad to, glad to have you here. Um, transition name. We have some transition names. What we're figuring out is now we want to make this um, shift to the top. And yes, we're going to add a transition name to, to this image also so that it moves. Um, yeah, so that it moves and fills the space. But for now, I just wanted to fix this weird gap with the with the layout. So I'm just gonna add that to my column. I think it was here. It's gonna add a style tag here. We should probably add this to every column, but this is the one that I care about now. Oh, I think we all, we were also switching. Oh no, that, that, that's fine. Okay, let's go back to. And comment in this. Okay, so this still works. We still see the, if you can see underneath, we still see this image fading out and the other, uh, and the new one fading in in the, in the same place. So if we add the same transition name to this two, it, it should, it should move places. But that's gonna cause another problem, I think, which is that it's gonna be on top of our model. I believe for for the for the duration of the transition at least. So let's find let's just add this a transition name here. I'm just gonna say I'm gonna call this image seven or something. I don't know. Uh, and oh, I think that's it because this is this component exists in both in both uh, pages. So now, yeah, you see how it moves correctly. This is what we we want but at least on the on the anim on the on the way in it's on top of our model and on the way out is underneath the model for some reason but it's on top of the gray of the overlay gradient so maybe we can make this clearer if we go to model and change this to like uh, let's let's do zinc nine hundred and let's do full opacity. You see that on the way out, it will show up first, and then it will reveal the the mold, the, the overlay underneath. So we can control the we can actually configure with Z index. We can set the, that we want this to be a, a lower Z index than this, but it's not a Z index on the element itself. It has to be a Z index on the on the transition on the zero element that is transitioning. So let's, let's pause this. Let's open the animation. Oops. Let's play the animation. And now at this point, we see that our exposure, right? But now we want to find this element, which should be here, view transitions, image seven. And this is the new one, right? And I think we can target the entire group probably and say that we want this, as you can see, this is, this is, this is after our wrapper and cover image. That's why it's on top of it. But when I, we can say that we want, we want this to have like a lower, a lower um, Z index. So let's go here, or we can target, we can target a view transition group. say image seven. This is one thing that is missing from the API, uh, supporting 
supporting like groups or classes of view transition names. So right now, the only two ways to target a pseudo element, a, a view transition group or a view transition new or old, is either by using a specific view transition name or by using the 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 star that would apply to all. So if I do this, it will apply to every element that I have on the page. But if I want to do something that applies to all my images, right? If I want to do something like this, image dash star, this won't work yet. Like it's not, it's not, it's not supported. So right now, your only your only option really, if you want to apply a, a some CSS to all images, but not all the elements, is to kind of dynamically define this with JavaScript, I guess. You have to dynamically de define the rules for each one of your images, or you know, copy and paste this all around and, and do one for each one of the, your images. Um, so yeah, but uh, there's a, let's see if I can find this. It's a w, W3C GitHub, there we go. Uh, yeah, so this is the this is the issue on GitHub where this is being discussed, right? So this is one proposed syntax where you have, I want to apply this to all of my boxes, right? So I have elements on the page that are boxes, and I want a particular CSS to apply to all of my boxes. Oh, this is, I guess, uh, yeah. There are there are different versions. This is still not defined, but this is being discussed. So if you're interested in this. In this uh, behavior, you can jump in on the comments here. Speaking of comments, I sorry that I miss. Uh, can you generate that style inside each image component? Uh, yes, yes, for sure. If I had a component for each one of my images, right? If I, in my gallery, I had an image astro component. If I put this on an image that astro component. Uh, I could define a style tag inside of that, and it would use the ID. Yeah, it would use the ID of the image or the URL to generate the the, the styles dynamically. So yeah, you can definitely do that. Well, for now, I just care about this particular image. I don't want to add a view transition to all of my to all of my um, images in the gallery. So I'm just gonna set this C index of this to one. Zero. I don't know. Let's let's play with zero and see how that looks. Yeah, this is still on top. So I'm guessing what I have to do is I want to set that transition name off this other stuff, like the the wrapper and the cover image. I want to set the Z index to you know higher than that. So let's do wrapper and cover image instead and Z index of two or something. There we go. Now it's underneath. It's still, yeah, it's still on top of our overlay. And that's because we don't have a, we don't have a transition name for our overlay, but we can add it, I guess, and we can set that to a higher Z index than this image and it should fix that. It's very, it's very like you only notice it at the end of the transition when the, you know, this becomes darker, but we can do that. If I go to the model and let's say my overlay, I want this to be a transition name of overlay. By default, it's gonna fade in, which is nice because that's what we want for the overlay. But we can also customize that animation. And I wanna say that my overlay has a Z index of one. And this should, in theory, fix that. See on the way back. Yeah, it's underneath the overlay. Right, I think it's looking pretty pretty cool. Let's see how much time we have. We have another forty-five minutes, or so 
to play with this. Maybe 30 minutes to play with this. Um, let's see if we can do this thing with the content. So that because it's bothering me that if I pause the animation, it's bothering me that the content shows up here. And if you can see it, it's very small. But, oops. Oh, thanks so much. Thank you so much for the follow. I forgot that <laughs> we had this enabled. Uh, oh, that's not what I wanted to do. There we go. That's way too big. Let's find... Oh, this is interesting because it's the mobile style. Let's see if we can reproduce this here. We go. You see how this placeholder content, it shows up underneath, right? It's not very good. So what we can do is um, we can try to hide this by default and only animate in after the transition ends, right? So, which is what ha what's happening here in this demo originally, right? So th this is first expanding, and then when the transition ends, the content kind of slides slides up or slides in and also fades in at the same time, which we, we can do without view transitions. We can do this with a regular CSS animation or, um, yeah, it's a, I guess a regular CSS animation. So let's find where content is. Maybe we can put some more content. Let's grab from this flow byte. We found a nice component to use here in cards, I think. Uh, this, I like this list. So we're just going to copy this. I'm going to put it in the model as the content. Uh, this is going to have dark style. So let me see how this looks first. Yeah, it all looks all dark. Why is it not 100%? Oh, has a max width, so let me remove that max width first. Yeah. So if I leave this like this, this is going to be even more noticeable at this point, right? It's coming from, from below. Oh, and here, this is interesting because on the way back, the contents doesn't exist. So it disappears immediately. That's going to be harder to fix, I think, because we will either have to make the content disappear first. So let's see how the demo is handling this on the way out. Yeah. OK, so it disappears because it is the middle of the animation. It's kind of like disappearing first, but at the same time that the transition is happening. Yeah. So let's see how this looks by applying. Uh, we can apply a transition name to this, which will make it fade fade out, and then we can we can determine how we want the the exit animation to look like. So let's go to. Here, this is my content. If I apply a transition name here of uh, model content, now I should, okay, this, <laughs> I have a problem with the Z index, but it's fading in and fading out underneath, right? Uh, for now, I'm just going to do this. This is probably a bad idea, but this is working with models. I, I'm OK doing some Z in, some level of Z indexing. And also, it's the only way, really, we want to order, we want to manage the order in which the pseudo groups appear on the screen. This is the only way to do it, I believe. Um, because you ha we have no control, really, over the order in which these transition groups appear on the page. The browser handles adding those to the page and I guess it just goes in the order of the DOM maybe um, but still if you have an element that you want to be underneath 
but you don't want to be part of that transition of the entire page, you have to set the Z index lower than the rest of the page. So um, I was going to do the uh, model content of a Z index of three. That didn't work for some reason. Did I miss model contents? Why is it underneath? Hmm, that's interesting. Let's uh, see back this. Model content. Yeah, I'm not seeing the Z index here. What's what I'm doing wrong? Your transition group. Oh, it's as is model, not model. Okay. That's why. So yeah, it's still not moving with the rest of the page because it's just it's just appearing and disappearing, right? And this, this page the content doesn't exist. We can fix this on the way in by doing the thing that we say we we're going to do, which is, um, which is have it expand, have the content show up only when you enter the page, but fixing on the way out is going to be harder. So let's see, let's, let's fix it on the way in first. Um, let me actually add a class to this so I can do this with regular CSS model content. And I'm gonna add a style tag from Astro, which is nice because it's this is scoped automatically. I don't have to worry about this class name matching other elements on elsewhere on the page. And we can do uh, maybe an animation. Can define a key, uh, keyframes, keyframe. I forgot how you define custom animation. Um, fading. It's add keyframe. Oh, I forgot. Let, let me copy an example. <laughs> uh, there are some nice transitions here. Keyframe. There we go. Keyframes. Um, let's do translate slide from the right. Yeah, let's copy this, all this. Oh, I was defining this inside of a class. That's why it wasn't working. And now I want to apply this to, I'm going to apply this to the content itself, not to the pseudo elements. I also want to say an animation delay of 250. And let's see how it looks. That's not what I was expecting. Hold on. Oh, because I'm fading. I'm fading out. What I want to do is want to fade in. Okay. I don't. I don't need the slide. Maybe the slide. Actually, I want to slide from. Uh, slide from bottom. From bottom and this is going to be translate y uh, from 30 to I guess to zero there you go this is kind of like what's happening in here in this other example um, where we have the content finishes growing and then this fades in. Maybe we can speed this up a little bit. Well, let me see how this looks. It would look much better in 100%. Yeah. So the way in looks looks better. The way out is the one that we want to 
we want to see how we can fix. Yeah. So, what? back yeah i think so yeah it's gonna be tricky because it would be nice if we had a way to to wait for the an animation to finish before you actually perform the the transition right and that's what i had if we go to the um, i can show you maybe i can show you the code for my astro records demo See how it looks here. Let me, let me pause the animation now at this point. Yeah, let me let's see if I can I have the other one because I had a version, the version that I did with Turbolinks. It's called Turbolinks. Nope. See how the branch. Is not deployed somewhere. Well, but I can show you the code either way. This is the version that had Turbolinks, and the reason I'm showing this is Turbolinks had a nice, um, a nice feature of the API, which, which was that it will let you await for an animation to finish, or for do you want to do something um, before actually doing the transition. So let's. Find it should be here. Yeah, I think this is it. Yeah, so this is what's happening is that before, whenever I am about to do a page transition, right, I prevent the default the default animation or the default transition from happening. Then I do an await for. Or an animation. I wanted to animate the the little the little record here. The little record going back in inside of the the inside of the case, and then it will do the transition. And I could do that by doing this, right? I could uh, wait for the animation to finish, and then once that, that happened, I could do the resume, and at that point, it will actually move to the previous page, right? But uh, with Astro, I don't think we have a hook like that. We don't have a hook that happens before the swap, before the, the, the page navigation. We have one that fires after the swap, but in this case, what we want is one that happens be before it. So we can say, before navigating out of this model, give me, I don't know, 100 milliseconds to fade this out and then resume the animation so that by the time this, this is going out, I don't have to worry about the content being here, right? So that's why we see this. It's very, it's not very noticeable, maybe. I don't know how the, the yeah, I don't know how the, I'm looking at the stream and seeing if it, you, this is noticeable or not. But it's definitely noticeable if you slow this down, right? On the way in, everything looks good. The content shows up. But on the way out, you see that this is going to fade away on its own. And uh, what we can do the we can do very quickly is to define the exit animation for this content and just instead of doing a fade out, I'm just gonna make it go away. I'm just gonna disable the animation, right? So uh, we can do that by and this is probably yeah, this is probably gonna be the last thing we're gonna demo for today. But let me find the blog post here. There's a section that talks about animating things in and out. Um, exit and entry, let's see, exit. Custom entry and exit animations. And what you can do is you can say that when the, when the new element on the page is the only child, which means that there is no view transition old for the cyber in this case. 
This means the only the new exists. This means this is an entry transition. The cyber is appearing for the first time. And the same for the old, for the exit transition. When the old one is the only child, that means it's an exit transition because I'm I'm removing the the element from the page. So we can do this, we can copy this and go back to our layout and say that when our model content, when the old of the model content is the only child, which means this is the exit transition, maybe we can just say animation none. This might look slightly better than the other, the other one that we had. So let's see. Oh, it just stays here. So, uh, display none. Yeah, it disappears immediately. Um, which of course in this very slow down animation doesn't look very good, but on the full, full speed animation, it looks better than when it was fading out, because when it was fading out, I could still see the shadow as the animation was happening. Here, the content disappears right away and the rest, you know, it shrinks down. So it's not as bad. It's very good. I think it's pretty good. Yeah. All right. Um, let's see. Let's see if I have another thing you can demo. I think this covers most of what I wanted to to talk about today. We did the, the thing that was sliding up. We did the stagger animation of the content. Of course, we did the morphing of the card. Um, yeah, that's it. I'm gonna call it a day unless there's something else you wanted to to see about these animations, this transition. I will post the link to the repo if you're interested. I will clean it up a little bit. Uh, it might be it might be useful in case you want to do something like this. But yeah, otherwise that's the stream. Thank you all for joining. Thank you for everyone who joined, who were chatting in the chat. This is, as you probably know, this is my first stream. If you didn't notice for the low quality and the, the no music. <laughs> but this was super fun. Thank you all for joining. Um, if you found me through Twitch, uh, you can... You can follow me on Twitter as Charga. I will probably do another stream at some point, maybe next week or maybe a couple of weeks from now. But uh, yeah, if there's anything you would like to see about view transitions, I do a lot of like view transitions demo. There is a, a blog post on the, I lost it. Um, where is it? Pretty sure I reposted something about this. There you go. So there's a blog post on the on the Chrome developers blog where uh, we talk about Astro, the, the journey of Astro. Like this is um, this whole like an Astro blog post, but it has a link has links to a bunch of my previous demos for the transitions. So you can see this one. This is the first one that I made with with uh, the movies demo. You can find others here for the live transitions. This is probably the coolest one because this shows that you can have, um, that the anim while the transition is happening, if you have a video playing or something, they continue to play, right? So you can go here and as you can see that I'm moving across completely different pages, but the, the, the video continues to play. And this is better when we slow this down. Slow this down, click here. You see that the, uh, there are a bunch of th things moving on the page, like this, this header, like it moves to, to different parts of the page, the text grows, and the video continues to play as I were doing the transition, which I think is pretty cool. And yeah, you find some demos here in the blog post with the links to the, the demo and the source code if you wanna, if you wanna take a, a deeper look. But yeah, feel free to reach out on, on Twitter with any questions. 
uh, will the recording be saved? I think so. I didn't change anything. So if the default on Twitch is to record the, the stream, then yes. If not, unfortunately not. But I'm pretty sure that I recorded some other streams in the past where I was I was streaming from my PS4 while I was playing Destiny. Um, so I think so. But I will let you know right after this. Thank you, uh, thank you, Spyro3. Thank you, Matthias. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining today. Uh, hope you have a great rest of your Friday. Have an excellent weekend. And I'll see you around.